What fictional character do you feel bad for the most? The girl squirrel from the Sword in the Stone animated film. If you haven't seen it, the protagonist Arthur gets magically turned into a squirrel and a girl squirrel falls in love with him. When Arthur gets turned back into a human and leaves her all heartbroken and crying it genuinely upset me. As a young kid it was one of my first experiences of feeling real pity, and it's stuck with me ever since. It wouldn't have hit as hard if Merlin didn't note that they pick a mate for life. So a little boy's training lesson left that girl squirrel to be heartbroken for the rest of her life. The kid's like 12. How long do squirrels live anyway? Get the hell back in that tree and live a happy life with that girl squirrel damn it. King of England can wait a few years. Wow. I've been scrolling for a good few minutes, and I genuinely was not expecting to be hit with that. Last time I saw that film, I was too young to understand the weight of that. Had never felt that way towards anyone to know how crushing that must have been for the poor squirrel. But as this poor kid is always manipulated by his friends and grounded for everything. Butters, you're grounded. That line always makes me laugh but also feels so bad for him. Pop trivia, Butters and Pip have the same character trope. Matt and Frey realized during season 2 that Pip had so much potential but the whole 19th century Englishman thing made the character unusable for what they wanted to portray. So they killed off Pip and slowly started introducing Butters. I always felt bad for poor old Edward Scissorhands. His pop died before giving him real hands frown. And then he became a sex target for countless rapey middle-aged women. Goofy. I'm sure anyone around 30 or so who has seen the Goofy movie understands exactly what I mean. Oof. Yep that was rough. He just wanted to spend time with Max. Watching this as an adult was like seeing a whole new movie. The Squirrel in Ice Age. Poor fellow just wants his acorn. We were just watching this with my 5 year old and my husband says he's some kind of squirrel rat, oh my gosh, that's why his name's Scrat. And I just laughed because I never realized that either. The most tragic part was when he died and went to acorn heaven, but then got pulled back because Sid the Sloth resuscitated him. Why is everyone so mean to Charlie Brown? Also courage the cowardly dog had to put up with a lot of BS. No kidding Charlie Brown does nothing but help his classmates, all the time and just gets crap for it. I think about this every time I watch the Christmas special. No one sent him a Christmas card. Everyone focuses more on commercial gain than what Christmas is actually about. He was offered the role of director for the annual Christmas play, only to have everyone ignore his directions and change the script to include pointless things like a Christmas queen. He decides to go get a Christmas tree to improve the mood, only to be told to get a shiny fake tree. He picked the sad little tree because he empathized with it, and because it was the only real one in the whole lot. He brought it back and was criticized. They said he couldn't follow basic instructions. The line that sticks with me most is when a random girl calls him hopeless. Completely hopeless. In frustration, he leaves with the tree. All of those kids, and even Snoopy, laughed at him and rejected him. Sure, they try and make up for it at the end, but at the end of the day they changed very little as people, if at all. They'll wake up the next day and be exactly the same people. The Halloween special was made after the Christmas special, and involves Charlie getting rocks instead of candy when he went trick-or-treating. For every house he went to. Every. House. Linus was the only one who showed any empathy to him throughout the special, and even he's an ass to Charlie Brown at times. All of these kids are little shit stains. Charlie Brown was noticeably depressed throughout the entire special and they barely cared, in fact they made it even worse. I love that special, but I hate those kids. John Coffey from The Green Mile. Him and Edward Delacroix too. The one who talked to mice, but the arse butt of a young guard thought it would be funny not to wet the sponge. E a word. Rickety Cricket. 
Cricket is like their picture of Dorian Gray. We only have 15 seasons because Cricket takes all the abuse for the gang. The episode he fell in love with the dog killed me. Mace Hughes. R.I.P. Hughes. He dug too deep for the boys but I believe he didn't regret a thing besides not being around for his daughter. It's a terrible day for rain. Faramir. I always feel bad for him when I rewatch the Yellow Trilogy for the umpteenth time, the extended edition to boot, which tells more of Faramir's story. Yes. I wish that. Cuts like a knife man it's horrible. His quality will always be shown in my eyes. The brother and sister from the grave of the fireflies. That's based on a true story. The only difference is the brother didn't die but went on to write the story plagued with guilt for not being able to save his sister. Jack's friend in Titanic. Imagine, you sneak onto a world class cruise with your best friend in the whole world, only for him to completely ignore you for a mediocre girl, only for you to fucking die when the ship sinks. All these years I would countless rewatches and I never considered what happened to him. Never forget Fabrizio de Rossi. Thomas from the Maze Runner series of novels. That kid is put through a ridiculous amount of emotional and physical trauma only to have everything he's ever done be destroyed by himself. And then there's poor Chuck Frown he literally just wanted to be happy and didn't do anything to hurt anyone the beginning of the Fever Code seriously made me feel for Thomas though too. Teddy from Westward. Poor guy has been treated like shit by everyone. The Marston Curse. That one lady who gets picked up by the pterodactyls in Jurassic World and then almost drowns before getting picked up again only to be eaten by a Mosasaurus. All she did was say her fiancé couldn't have a bachelor party. You know that had to be a writer trying to get back at his fiancé for not allowing him to have a bachelor party so he figured he'd kill her fictionally. Squidward. Was anything sadder than when he had to firmly grasp it? Tom Robinson from To Kill a Mockingbird. I also feel bad for Boo Radley. Poor guy gets treated like crap by his abusive family. Kiff. Sigh. Kiff. Stand in that hole so I look taller. Herschel Green in the Walking Dead comic. Lost his eldest kids to walkers, goes to the prison, youngest kids get beheaded and then during the attack on the prison, his last son gets shot and killed as they're trying to escape. Gives up on life and begs to be killed. There are so many characters you could say the same for, but I'm currently re-reading it and his character is among the most tragic. The whole prison war is just fucking brutal. Todd in the episode of Community where they divide into study groups. No offense. None taken. A single teardrop running down his face. You broke my boy Todd. Any citizen in the same city as a superhero. At some point that shit has to get old. Honey, an evil villain is going to release toxic gas at 5 p.m. if Pickle Man doesn't surrender himself. Are the gas masks in the kitchen cabinet or in the RV? Edited to add, I legit pulled Pickleman out of my ass and didn't know it was a real thing. Sorry for the unintentional reference. God can you imagine the car insurance rates? Your deductible doesn't cover being stepped on by the Hulk. This is the third time this year you've claimed your car was used as a projectile weapon by Superman. Maybe park in a different lot? Anyway your rates are going up again. Not to mention 8 month waiting list for windshield replacements well if Dr. Doom had announced this was going to happen we could have stocked up. And by the time the heroes say we saved the city, three quarters of the city is destroyed, radioactive, and on fire. Sydney Prescott. She's had, what, 8 different serial killers after her. Pretty much everyone she's known or dated has been brutally murdered. And all because she did, nothing. She did nothing to deserve a life of torment. But wait. There's more. Another scream is coming so far only Dewey is confirmed. Realistically, her mental health would be fucked. She'd probably be in a facility somewhere, catatonic from all of the grief and built up survivor's guilt. Or maybe she would have killed herself, thinking that was the only way to prevent another ghost face from hacking up everyone around her. 
poor Sid. Subscribe for more hot Reddit takes in your inbox, guaranteed.